Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you Paramount Pictures' great musical success, Holiday Inn, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another thrilling musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and, and a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, lovely Dorothy Warren Scholler and I have a wonderful invitation for you. It's inscribed with the musical magic of Mr. Irving Berlin. And you're all invited. Happy holidays, happy holidays, make the calendar keep ringing, happy holidays to you. If you're burdened down with trouble, if your nerves are wearing thin, mark your load down the road and come to holiday. Traffic noise affects you like a sexy violin. Kick your cares down the stairs and come to Holiday Inn. Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! Happy Holiday! holiday. May the calendar keep ringing. Happy Holiday! Hello, and uh, Merry Christmas. Oh, same to you. So can you tell me where I can find the owner of Holiday Inn, Mr. Jim Hardy? Jim Hardy? My best friend. I wouldn't go any place without him. Wonderful boy. Oh, would you tell him that Linda Mason is here to see him? Oh, he'll be delighted to see you. I know because <laughs> I'm Jim Hardy. Oh, oh, forgive me. Oh, what a darling place. You like it? Well, it was built by a fellow who was too lazy to work 365 days a year, so he decided to open an inn that would run only on holidays. <laughs> brilliant idea, don't you think? And dreamed up by this brilliant friend of yours, Jim Hardy. <laughs> yep. But tell me, what are you doing way up in the wilds of Connecticut on Christmas? Well, I heard about Holiday Inn, and I wanted to see it. Well, I'm afraid it's not open yet. I spent all my money on lumber, and I couldn't talk any performers into working for nothing. Well, I'd perform for you for nothing. <laughs> You look more like a debutante than a showgirl. What do you do? Oh, sing a little and uh, dance a little. Yeah, wonderful. Come on over to the piano. You know, I've written special music for each holiday, and, well, this sort of gives me a chance to keep a little promise I made to myself. A promise? What kind? Well, I said I was going to sing this song at the end of the night. Now I've got somebody to sing it to and sing it with. I'm dreaming of a while. Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen to hear Sleigh bells in the snow With every Christmas card I write May your days be merry and bright And may all your Christmases be white You try it. I'll prompt you. 
grand opening New Year's Eve. Uh, there's only one proviso in this verbal contract. Did you ever hear of Ted Hanover? Mm, the famous dancer? Oh, why, sure. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the reasons I checked out of New York is that every time I find a girl, she's suddenly the only girl in the world for Ted Hanover. So I, well, I just want you to steer clear of Mr. H. Oh, don't worry. You know something, Linda? It's beginning to look like a happy, lovely New Year. Man, oh man, the place is packed. He said holiday it wouldn't work. You ready for your number, honey? Sure. Look at the clock. 11.59. Well, it's hot towel, old year. It's almost time. Practically next year. One minute to midnight. One minute to go. One minute to say goodbye before we say hello. Let's start the new year right. Twelve o'clock tonight when they dim the light. Let's begin. Kissing the old year out. Kissing the new year. Let's watch the old year die with a fond goodbye and our hopes as high as a kite. How can our love go wrong if we stop? That's it. Happy New Year, Linda. Happy New Year, Jim. I'll see you out on the floor. All right. Hello, little lady. What? Will you dance with me? I beg your pardon. Oh, Mr. Hanover. You're Ted Hanover. My dancing partner left me, so I'm slumming in the haylofts of Connecticut. Let's dance. Oh, Mr. Hanover, I can't. Music! Music, please! Please, Mr. Hanover, it's in my contract. I... Ted Hanover. Uh, Ted Hanover and a new partner. Oh, famous Ted Hanover. What a surprise. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you uh, surprised us all, Mr. Hardy. Imagine letting us see Ted Hanover and his new partner. Here we go again. Oh, where am I? Well, good Morning. Morning. You're at Holiday Inn, Ted, and the holiday is over. Jim, something happened last night. I met a girl. I've got to have her as my dancing partner. Girl? Girl? Yeah, everything was so blurred in the New Year's Eve excitement. I didn't get her name. I, Jim, you got to help me out. Who was she? Dancer, huh? Oh, I remember. Must have been that girl in the evening gown, and the belt in the back. Looked just like a girlfriend of mine. Consuela Schlepkiss. Huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And Swale used to play the pinball machine down at the corner drugstore. High girl, three weeks in a row. Hey, she'll be here at Holiday Inn the next time you're open. She will? Yeah, when is the next holiday? January, January. No, nothing more than January. February. February 12th, Lincoln's birthday. I'm sure to find her here then. Oh, Mr. Lincoln, why was you born? <laughs> You decent, Linda? Can I come in your dressing room? Come in, Jim. Happy Lincoln's birthday. Yeah, uh, say, Linda, I've decided a number will go better if we do it uh, in uh, disguise, in uh, uh, character makeup. Character makeup? Oh. Well, what's the matter? Well, for a month and a half, I've been dreaming about how, how pretty I was going to look tonight. Oh, you'll have plenty of times to be pretty. Here, I'll help you put on your makeup. <laughs> Nobody will recognize me. You ain't it the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, holiday in salutes the 12th of February. There's a man who's the pride of this great nation. The man who's the cause of this earth. February morn, a tiny baby boy was born. Abraham, Abraham. He glowed up this tiny babe. The folks all called him Honest Abe. Abraham, oh Abraham. Now in 1860, he became the 16th president. Now he's in the Hall of Fame. The most respected gent. That is why we celebrate this blessed February date. Abraham, oh Abraham. The country's going to the dawn. They shouted loud and long. And from the cabin made alarms, the right man came along. USA's united thanks to one whose name was Nancy Hanks. Go see if you can't get all my generals tight. That's why we celebrate this blessed February date. Abraham it was a real fine one man. Great, great man. Abraham. Oh. Hello, are you still there, New York? Danny, this is Ted Hanover. Look, as my agent, you've got to help me find this gal. Goodness knows how long I'll have to wait for another of Jim's blasted holidays. When? When? Day after tomorrow's another holiday? Well, of course I'll stick around. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy We'll return for Act Two of Holiday Inn in just a moment. You know, all signs point to the fact that this year, Santa Claus is going to be busier than ever before. Here's one important bit of evidence, one that may be familiar to you. Single bell, single bell, single bell. Is that you, Harry? You're home from the office early tonight. Oh, yeah, a little. Thought I'd give you a hand getting some of the Christmas presents wrapped to send out. Oh, what's new? Well, we got another flock of Christmas cards today. Oh, Gosh, I don't know when we've ever gotten such a bunch of them so early. Looks as if it's going to be a banner year for us in Christmas cards. <laughs> yes, and it looks as if it's going to be a banner year for everybody. The post office department has called on the nation's railroads to move an estimated 5,765,000,000 pieces of Christmas mail this month. That's an increase of more than 5% over last December. 
Why, it's enough, as a matter of fact, to give every American, including members of the armed forces serving abroad, more than 36 gifts and greeting cards. To do this tremendous job, the railroads, which normally move about 99% of all non-local parcels and letters, must provide enough mail car space to make up the equivalent of almost 63,000 standard size mail cars over 60 feet in length. <laughs> that's almost enough to reach direct from your home to Santa Claus's headquarters. And that's not all. St. Nick's other helper, the Railway Express Agency, expects to handle 30% more packages this month than they handled last December. Naturally, both these teammates, the railroads and the Railway Express Agency, have been working night and day to provide the extra equipment and facilities needed to handle this tremendous Christmas load. They have spared neither time nor trouble to see to it that you and your family and friends receive as promptly as possible the Christmas cards and presents that will, we hope, bring you the merriest Christmas of all. Here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Paramount's Holiday Inn, starring Gordon MacRae as Jim Hardy and Dorothy Warrenshold as Linda Mason. Happy Holiday! Jim, the inn looks so romantic with all the valentine hearts. Well, I pose for those cupids myself. <laughs> uh, here's something for you. Oh, Jim, it's the most beautiful valentine. I've never seen such a big heart. Well, open it up. Why, why it's music. Mm hmm Dedicated with uh, love to Miss Linda Mason. Read what it says. It's not my watch you're holding, it's my heart. It's not the note I send you that you quickly burn. It's not the book I lend you that you never return. things like this always have to happen to me. Where have you been? I've been looking for you since New Year's Eve. For me, Mr. Hanover? You're my new dancing partner. Where do you want to go? Havana? Rio? Hollywood? Oh, I'd like to stay right here at Holiday Inn. Well, you can be here for the holidays and be my partner between times. I'll make you famous. Oh, Jim? <sighs> go ahead. I don't want to hold up your career. But come home soon, huh? Wire to Mr. Jim Hardy, Holiday Inn, Midville, Connecticut. Rebet, booking in Florida for our new act makes it impossible to be there for Washington's birthday. See you Easter. Best, Linda. Wire for Mr. Jim Hardy. Thank you. Regret booking in New York makes it impossible to get there for Easter. Well, if she won't come here, I'm going there. Linda. Jim. Oh, Jim. Oh, sweetheart, I couldn't spend another holiday without you. Would you take my arm and join me for the day? Oh, will I? You know, Fifth Avenue is the only place to spend Easter anyhow. Come on, Linda. 
parade's ready to start. Never saw you look quite so pretty before. Never saw you dressed quite so lovely. What's more? I could hardly wait to keep all day this lovely morning. And my heart beat fast as I came through the door. With all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest lady in the Easter parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look me over, I'll be the proudest lady. Next holiday, Linda, Timbuktu, Tasmania, the North Pole. And that's why we brought Mr. Dunbar to Holiday Inn, Jimmy Boy. He's one of Hollywood's top directors. And I'm offering you all the opportunity of a lifetime. It does sound awfully good, Jim. Well, I don't know, Mr. Dunbar. The whole idea of Holiday Inn would make a wonderful picture, honey. And we'd like to star the sensational new dance team, Hanover and Mason. Mm, there's a pal for you, Linda. Didn't even give you first billing. How about it, Jimmy boy? We're all heading for Hollywood, the land of milk and money. Well, I'd like to sort of keep this little place just the way it is. Now you're going to be selfish and keep Linda from getting her big break? Okay. Take the place, take the idea, take the whole darn thing. Well, but what about you, Jim? They want you to write the music. I'll send it to them. And I'll work here. Is that the deal you wanted, or should I have thrown in my shirt, too? Dear Mr. Dunbar, I've just finished the last of the Holiday Inn songs. It's for Thanksgiving. And here it's turkey time, sure enough. I made a record of this little hunk of cranberry sauce. I pause in this letter to give it another spin to make sure all the notes are in the right place. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Are you kidding me? I haven't got a great big yacht to sail from shore to shore. Hmm. Still, I've got plenty to be thankful for. Yeah, you really loaded that. I've got plenty to be thankful for. Like what? No private car, no caviar, no carpet on the floor. Still, I've got plenty to be thankful for. You know you're better off than I am, Clyde. I've got eyes to see with. Hmm. You need glasses. Ears to hear with. Arms to hug with. Lips to kiss with. Someone to adore. Who is this boy? How could anybody ask for more? My needs are small I buy them all at the five and ten cent store Oh, sing it, kid oh, I've got a plan to be thankful for And here we go I've got plenty to be thankful for My gosh I'm not going to send this record to Hollywood I'm going to send me <laughs> Quiet, quiet on the set. All right, Miss Mason, we'll take the final shots in the set of Holiday Inn. I think you have the mood. Your holiday success was empty. You've lost the one man you love. You know, usual hope. All ready for rehearsal. 
Well, let's let's shoot it, please. Oh, all right. It's a take. Lights on the Christmas tree. All right, dolly in for close-up on Linda Mason, alone in the Holiday Inn. All right, ready? Roll them. Mighty pretty lady. Oh, Jim. Oh, take me back to the real holiday in. Wait a minute. For every holiday? Everyone. Every holiday in the year. And all the days in between? Oh, yes. Oh, then every day will be Christmas. Dorothy Warren Schultz will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Olin Soleil, Bill Johnstone, and our entire company. Holiday Inn was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Across the nation, more and more people are enjoying the opportunity to hear good music at first hand. For example, the great symphonic orchestras of our major cities spend a good deal of time on tour traveling thousands of miles by railroad each year to bring the entertainment and inspiration of their music to people all over the country. The record for orchestral travel has been set by the Minneapolis Symphony Orchestra, which is now celebrating its golden jubilee season. Like the four-year-old railroad hour, the Minneapolis Symphony is dedicated to bringing America the finest music. And that's why on its 50th anniversary... The railroads are happy to salute this truly great orchestra. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again, ladies and gentlemen, is the charming Dorothy Warren Show. Hi, thank you, Gordon. You know, it's a real holiday time treat for me to be on the railroad hour again. Well, we've missed you, Dorothy, but we've been watching you on television and applauding you on the stage at the San Francisco Opera. Why, thank you, Gordon. <laughs> you know, I'll bet the show train has a load of Christmas cheer, cheer for next week. Well, you bet you have, Dorothy. You've got to listen for our Railroad Hour Christmas party. I'll be the host, and Dorothy Kirsten will be the hostess. And there's a special package we're wrapping up for all the kiddies. It's the Nutcracker Suite. And mm. we have a hunch that'll help make this a happy holiday. <laughs> I'll set the radio right alongside my Christmas tree. And by the way, we're expecting you back two weeks from tonight to help us ring in the new year. I'll see you with bells on. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. You are wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, when you're all invited to our Railroad Hour Christmas party, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Holiday Inn was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the Technicolor production Road to Bali, starring Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Dorothy L'Amour. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' Technicolor production The Desert Song. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Here, the voice of Firestones on NBC.